I am upset before the season even starts, really. Listen, I, I like lacrosse. I do. Lacrosse is fun. It's good. It keeps guys active. It's a good game. The whole thing. Jack Cohn, man, he committed to Notre Dame before his sophomore year even started. This Saville quarterback is the it's deal. A it's a different dynamic. The lacrosse is creating an avenue uh, to college for athletes uh, it, it, at a higher rate than football kids. I mean, football, your measurables come into play. It seems like lacrosse, Mike, it, it's a quicker avenue. I don't know. I don't know if there, there's any science to that, but, you we, know. You know what we have to do? We have to get Jack in touch with Carcaterra because Kark always said, you know, he's Mr. Lacrosse, but he always said coming out of your Kark always said school, he's Mr. Lacrosse? No, no, no. Hey, no, he, no, you're funny. I always, because I say to him, Kark, when you were at Yorktown High School, if you were a college-level football player, would you have chosen lacrosse or football? He goes, quick. It's not even close. He goes, I would have played football. He know, goes, it's a great thing. Just look at look at look at Cohn. I mean, he's Notre Dame. Right. He's a sophomore. He, he he's not going to get that kind of commitment for football at this stage of the game. He's so. six two and a half, six three. Okay. He's got big hands. No, he does. I'm telling you, man. He's look, a college football. It's early player. in the game. It's a verbal commitment. His options are still open. Tore it up in the camps this summer. His options. So, do you think Sayville is in this poll? I think so. They should be. You know what? You know what's amazing? No skadoos in this small school wow. 15. The, the phrase of the year is going to be, what's happening, Haas? Yeah, no, you're right. I think he's into this season. We'll Listen. see if he's in this poll. No skadoos, bud. That's good. We didn't have a You poll. got it right. <laughs> yeah, we didn't have a poll last week. All right, here we go. For the first time ever wow. in the history of us doing Woo! polls, Elmwood Park is in the small school 15. They opened up this season with an eye opener. They beat a very good Pompton Lakes program 34-7. They have a division one quarterback in Michael Dare, who I love. 5-9 for 179 yards in this game and a big touchdown pass to your man, Sean Violante, who was everywhere. Everywhere. I mean, three picks, eight tackles, four of the five touchdowns. Mike, not only is it the first time they're ever in the poll, they have a first-year head coach, Tommy Mulligan. Yeah. You know what I mean? I, and Tom Mulligan has gone in there over the summer, changed the culture a little yeah. bit, changed the eye on the prize, got them focused to make some headlines, and the Crusaders did. I mean, Popton Lakes is like 33-3 and three in their last three years, yeah. and this is one of those victories that's like, wow. Last year, the defense gave up 30 points per game. Yeah. Not this year. Yeah. Yeah, no mulligans this year. Yeah. <laughs> At number 14. Come on, that's terrible. <laughs> Reineck. Oh, boy. Nicky Ionello's guys were unbelievable a year ago. They go to 2-0 now on the young season. They beat Woodlands 34-0. Dom Brescia, he was really good last year. 13 for 71 yards and two touchdowns in the 34 to nothing victory. At number 13. Oh, boy. Davion Quinlan. The dude got older, he got bigger, he got tougher, he got stronger, and he got his team a very good 10-point victory against Lindbrook, 43-33 to in the opener for both schools. Here's the coach's kid, Zach LeCicero, for Lindbrook, to our lacrosse buddy, Eddie Buhall, going to play up there Eddie for B. Kevin Cassis at Lehigh. Eddie but B. here's the story. Check out this run. Quinlan put on about 20 pounds. Oh, is, Mike, is there a <laughs> pancake stat for running backs? I know there is for offensive tackles. You get the pancake because this kid, D DK, is going to have some pancakes this year. The muscle, 33 carries, 333 yards, and five touchdowns. Also threw the ball 10 times, completing seven for 77 yards. Stay on Long Island where the that region's win streak goes to 25. And Babylon, they own that. The best on Long Island. Congratulations to Coach Rick Ponzone, who got his 100th career victory in the 35-0 victory against Greenport Southhold. Mike, you get the feeling the only team that could beat them maybe would be John Glenn. That is the last team to beat them, November 12th. Shanny's guys. 2011, they beat them good. Uh, Glenn went on to beat Roosevelt in the LIC. Look, 25 in a row. You dare to dream a little bit. Once upon a time, William Floyd won 42 mm. in a row on Long Island. I mean, a lot of turn over this year uh, on this team What's at Babylon. What's the all-time record? Southside out of Rockville Center? No, I think 44? 42. Because Southside was a was a, a win was a you know, was like 37-0 and seven. 
something like that. Oh, like so games without a loss. Unbeaten. Unbeaten. The difference between unbeaten and win, you know, whatever you want to call it. Yeah. But that was also in the 1940s. Yeah. Um, but you know what? Let's see. Babylon, like I said, lost a lot of guys, but that number is out there, and they have won 25 in a row. And they'll see if they can get yeah. 26 now, when Edwin, they host Storm Waiting River. Good team. Friday night. Trust me, Edwin Rubio is annoyed with me now. County wrestling champ for John Glenn. We'll knock him off. <laughs> New Prov. Good thing we weren't at this game, buddy. It almost took three hours when they beat South 140 to 34. Quarterback Jack Harvey, he's the story. He had three fourth quarter touchdowns. They trailed by a point at that point for the game. 29 carries, 196 yards, and three touchdowns. When he went up top, did pretty well. 7 of 11 for 99 and two scores. They host 0-1 Belvedere on Friday night. At number 10, they won the Class 3 championship on Long Island a year ago. They open up at number 12. They fi they open up at number 10, finished at number 12. Martellotti's guys did a year ago. Saturday, they'll look to go to 2-0 and against Glen Cove. Jordan Fredericks in the victory against Beth Page, and they had to come from behind to be 1-0. 15 carries, 139 yards but the Syracuse recruit showed us a different dimension. Listen, we mentioned Cone. He's one of Long Island's little stars. This is Long Island's arguably biggest star. Look at Fredericks now throwing the ball to Syracuse commit to Devine Johnson. But Beth Page was up for this game, baby. Nick Carlino, 62 tough yards on this one. Don't look now. It's 15-7 Beth Page to the fourth quarter. 348 left. Jordan Fredericks goes to the playmaker, Sean Moran. Moran hauls it in. Two-point conversion was no good. Lawrence was still down 15 to 13. Final moments. Lawrence, when you're losing, when it's late, you go to the JF Express. Fredericks, 36-yard touchdown run, 139 yards on 15 carries. Lawrence survives. Yeah, no, they did. Whew. They were wiping sweat and rain off their forehead after that one over there at Beth Page. At number nine, they finished number two a year ago. They opened up seven spots lower. They held on to beat a good Madison team. They were up early in this game. The last time Madison had lost, actually the last time Mountain Lakes lost a football game. To Madison. Was to Madison, and it was the Brad Show. Not the Bad Show. The Brad Show. Brad Smith, 66-yard touchdown. Brad Landry, two touchdowns. One of 33, one of 30. And Bobby Frawley, 77-yard touchdown. And they were whooping it up the first ever home game under permanent lights. And that's a great game. I mean, this is one of those early season games that tells you what's going on. Because remember one thing, last year, uh, Mountain Lakes ran the table at 12-0. and 0. The three years before that mm. was all Madison. Yeah, Justin, Justin Goodwin, Goodwin and yeah. the boys. You know, so that's one of those great games in September. Right out of the gate, let's find out who we are. So advantage now, Mountain Lakes. It's been a while in that group since somebody other than Mountain Lakes or Madison has won a state title. You're right, you're right. <laughs> Speaking of state titles, uh, the Shabazz game, our number eight team, their game with Hoboken when they went into Hudson County was a rematch of last year's North One Group Two title. They lost an absolute heartbreaker. So the Bulldogs start the year at 0-1 but remain in our small school or get into our small school 15. We'll show you how it happened in just a second. At number seven, I'll tell you this, down at the shore, these cats of Rumson, the defending Central Jersey Group champs, they must be just angry. I mean, they must, it's like, when can we start our season? You know, something like a, the first game of the year, they got postponed. Second week, they had a bye. Now, all of a sudden, they finally get to play. Watch out, Matawan. They go there Friday night with one of the best runners in the state, Princeton-bound Charlie Volker, who led him to the title a year ago with over 2,000 yards rushing. Charlie's looking to hit somebody other than his neighbors. Yeah, no, you're right. Boy, do they need a game. At number six, Jersey City. Lincoln High School. What a game they have this weekend when they go into Newark to take on a very good week Wayak team. This past week, they took on Pleasantville. They rolled them 48-7. Devell Jones, 104 carries, two touchdowns. Quarterback Zymir Gordon threw for one. He also ran for one. At number five, Sava. You knew they were going to get in after that <laughs> monologue. Top five for the Golden Flash. Well, and this is how much respect I have for Coach Haas. I've always said I think he's one of the best coaches anywhere in the Tri-State. They opened up the year beating Eastport South Manor 42 to nothing. My man, 
the quarterback, Jack Cohn, 18 of 27, 386 and four. Two of the touchdowns went to Chris Rupp, had 164 yards and catches. Ryan Kelly had 102 yards and two scores. Matty Seltz doing his thing, of course. So oh. they go to Amityville this weekend. They'll go to 2-0 and in the young season. Seltz and Cone. Wow. At number four, the Cadets of St. Joe's. The school wins their 300th all-time football game when they beat Notre Dame of West Haven 17-6. There's no Jordan Vazano this year, the big, strong-arm quarterback. He's off in college. But there is Mufasa Abdul Basir, who in this game, 29 carries, 207 yards, and a touchdown. Had himself a big interception late in that game as well. Also, Lars Peterson is back. Yeah. Uh, that's big for them. Look, State of the Union He's for St. Joe's. Fordham, I think. Is that true? Fordham's getting good athletes, man. State of the Union for St. Joe's Trumpet. You know, they win that Class M state championship last year. They have a lot of state championships. They went to the FCAC title game last year. First ever appearance. Fell up short to New Canaan. Abdul Basir, Mike, one of the players in Connecticut you want to go see. Seems like he's been there forever, forever, okay? And now he's finally in his senior year. He's more shifty. He's more explosive. He's got more jukes. He opened up with 207 yards as they beat Notre Dame West Haven 17-6. So now, you know, Abdul Basir, very interesting player. I ask you, where does he fit in college football? I mean, this guy has so much ability, so many 200-yard days. You know, I have to reach out to Coach Delavecchia because he he, he is a next-level guy. Sure. I have to find out where. So I'll call. I'll talk to Coach. And I mean, you talk about great coaching, man. Up at St. Joe's, they've had some legends of the game. What Joe has done there yeah. is incredible. Again, the school won their 300th football game. Hasn't been around that long. Yeah. Eddie McCarthy started the program. The all-time winningest football coach in the state of Connecticut. He's at West Haven now. And then when he retired, or when he moved to West Haven, Christy Hayes came in and he got that whole right. hog thing going. I mean, you just have wonderful coaches up there at the Trumbull School. Big game this weekend. Fairfield Prep and the Jesuits wow. are upset after the heartbreaker last year when Vazano got him going up top. At number three, our buddy Vito Campanelli's Westwood Woo. team, state champs from a year ago, open up beating Pascac Hills 42 to 6. You hear about the game Colin Sanders had, threw a touchdown, caught a touchdown, ran for a touchdown. Boston College recruit Nolan Borgerson, the wide receiver, six catches, 72 yards, and a touchdown. At number two, it did not look like they would be there with 35 seconds left in the game, but Louis Tags, Red Wings of Hoboken. Boy, they pulled one out in a rematch of the North 1 Group 2 final with Shabazz. Quarterback Elijah Mercado, terrible in the first half, but he atoned for that in a hurry. Zaire Fogel, very good in this game, 175 yards. Look at Roy Pugh go up and get it. Oh, man, I mean, listen. That's a basketball kid. I know he's got to be on the basketball team timing that jump, but Hoboken, good push up front, and they're into the end zone. A year ago, Mercado played at Union City. Here, the point after no good. They're down 7-6. Fourth quarter, 145 left. Tariq Haskins, 31-yard touchdown. Ball game, 14-6. But hold on a second. Mercado going to go up top. Look at that rip to sophomore Wilden Germain. Now they go for two to tie it. They don't get it. 35 seconds left. This thing is done. Oh, that's right. There's a thing called an onside kick. Doesn't work most of the time. Here, the big bounce, the deflection, and it works. It's loose. And that means Mercado has a chance. And with 14 seconds left, he goes up top. Oh, Jermaine gets behind the secondary. And Hoboken has a thrilling 19 14 victory to go to 1-0. What a ball he delivers right there in between the defenders. And Polly Prep, they rolled Petty 28-0. Malik Bethea played great on defense. Femiano, Chris Parker, three touchdowns between them. So Polly, it'll be interesting to this see. This week, yeah. they play Canada Prep Football Academy. Yeah. Canada Prep Football Academy. Mike, listen, we live in an age of specialization. Whether it's basketball or basket weaving, you can have a coach, a camp, or a travel team. This is a school just created for football. Their head coach is Jeff MacArthur, all-time leading receiver at Cal. Why? Look who his quarterback was, Aaron Rodgers, oh, wow. when he was at Cal. This is his quote on the Canada Prep Football Academy. We're an all-boys school, and the only people here, the only people here are football players. 
<laughs> That's the whole school. You're kidding. That's it. The whole school's a football team. Canada Prep. They got about 71 kids, just like Polly. Should be fun. Oh, Canada.